today's harvest. Houston, I think we might have a problem. Hi, in case we haven't met, I'm Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry and we talk dehydrating all the time. And today we're gonna to be working through a lot of cucumbers where I'm doing cucumber cubes, shreds for tzatziki powder to make ranch dressing mix. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to some pickles. So stay tuned. Okay, so it's your choice whether or not you want to peel a cucumber. Always wash them because you need to, but um, you can peel it. If you don't like the flavor of the skin, like maybe it's bitter to you because that can happen with some vegetables, you can go ahead and peel it. You can also choose to go ahead and core this if you don't like all the seeds. What I have is not only what we harvested in the garden, but I had bought a, purchased a bunch of cucumbers in order to do this and then the stuff happened in the garden too. So I'm working with all of it. So you can core it if you'd like. That's a lot of seeds you may not want to have in yours and that's up to you. And then just go through here and use whatever great size that you want on your box cutter on your box shredder not box cutter okay another alternative for you especially if you prefer maybe a chunkier texture or maybe you want to play with it to see which one you like best you can actually do uh, a chop so that you have some dice now this might be better for you if you'd like a chunkier tzatziki um, or you know you like to put it in something else and you want some some texture uh, skin hard. Skin's a little tougher, so it was a little harder to get through, but we can do these just like this. Not quite so hard. That way you're going to get some longer pieces, but later you can break them up if you want. If you do it the flat way, it gets you some smaller pieces. So it really is dependent on what you want. Now remember, cucumber is so much water, it's going to shrink up into tiny bits. So those won't be so large and when you rehydrate them they won't be quite so large when you're done okay but instead we're going to use this shredder uh, i invested in it uh, i had one for a long time and then didn't use it i was doing a lot of shredded cheese to freeze and then i found that i just wasn't using it as much anymore so i got rid of it way back when and uh knowing that we we're going to have a lot more harvest going on and then i could use it i went ahead and invested in a new one so we're using the kitchenaid shredder um, there may be different varieties of this depending on how old your machine is and when you got your shredder. Uh, but that's what I'm going to use today because it's going to help us get through here faster. The only thing is, is that you do have to cut your cucumbers into a size that will fit in the chute. Okay, this is the first time I've ever done cucumbers in this before. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a lot of juice. Um, and what happens when you get juice is that you lose nutrients and flavor because that juice is going away. I tend not to strain my cucumbers out when I do these normally. Let's see if we can do this. You can see it dripping off the machine. There's gonna be a lot of juice, okay? So because I know there's gonna be a lot more cucumbers coming this summer uh, from our garden, I'm gonna go ahead and just let this drain on its own naturally. I'm not going to try to force out a bunch of juice because I want to keep that flavor within the cucumber as much as I can. But I'm just, while I'm finishing up the rest of these, I'm going to let just the natural occurrence of drain happen here. And I'm going to save this water, I mean this cucumber juice to use for jelly later in the year uh, when I've collected more to make it worth doing. So here are the shreds. I'm gonna, I put them on fruit leather paper because uh, it's gonna make it easier for me to do, deal with them. They won't fall through. It just makes things easier for me, but you can certainly do it on any kind of mesh that you want. Okay, we're doing these at vegetables, 125F, 52C. You can go any temperature below that that you like if you wanna save a little bit of more vitamins. time we don't care about we let it run here we go okay so we're going to do some refrigerated bread and butter pickles i've got most of mine already cut up in here uh, this is the last one that i have to do and on for part of it we're also going to include a jalapeno to make it spicy and sweet bread and butter pickles i'll have the recipe down in the description box below these are refrigerated not canned so i'm not trying to follow the exact uh nchfp canning uh recipe for them so I'm just going to cut them in about a quarter of an inch, but I'm not terribly fussy with the size because I like them a little on the thicker side. And to this, we're going to add some salt, 
about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons, and just mix it all up. What we're wanting is to get some of the moisture out of the pickles. We're gonna set this in the refrigerator for about an hour. Okay, to make our brine, we're gonna have a cup of vinegar. And like I said, the recipe is gonna be available in a link down below, you can just print it off. A half a cup of apple cider vinegar, bread and butter spices, celery seed, mustard seed, turmeric, turmeric, say it correctly, Darcy. There you go, and then don't wipe your hand on anything else because it will stain. Then sugar, and brown sugar. And what you want to, this to do is just sit and melt so that the sugars completely dissolve into the brine. Okay, I didn't have any fresh onion on hand so I pulled out some dried onions. It's gonna be fine. Remember, we're not canning these. We don't have to follow an exact recipe the same way that if we were canning. So because these are going into the refrigerator, it's gonna be fine. And then here we're putting the brine on. Now what I will recommend is that you do not, if you used a, a glass bowl in the refrigerator, do not do what I just did in a glass bowl that's still cold because then you will shatter that. Now, you may find that this is not enough brine. I may have had too many pickles for the brine amount. I can always make a second batch of it and then add it to this. Now we're gonna let this sit for a while, just like this. Mix it all up. The onions will absorb the brine. And if you wanna do this and you feel need to, you can always cover this with a towel to let it sit. Okay, so I'm just gonna start transferring these to jars. I'm gonna fill this one up about halfway. Oops, I said halfway, didn't I? And what I'm adding now, I don't know if you could see that, I just added some jalapenos. Now, if you wanna spice this up for yourself, you can always do um, any kind of like red chili flakes or maybe some red chilies fresh, but we just decided to do this for my son and my dad. They will enjoy this sweet and spicy version. Me, not so much, but that's okay. We're gonna have enough for a whole quart for me. We're gonna need a bigger jar. Okay, it's also likely I'm gonna have to make another batch of brine. This doesn't look like it's gonna be enough to fill all three jars, but I had more pickles than I thought. Because you're trying to guess of, you know, how many pickles is it really gonna be? When they say seven pickles, seven medium pickles, well, what's a medium? So they recommend four to five inch pickles. Mine were not like that, so. It's okay, we'll make more brine. And before we get too far, mark your jars. Sweet, sweet and spicy. So let's see what's going on with those dehydrated cucumbers, shall we? All right, here we go. Here are our shreds. No, those are more of our chopped, sorry. These are our shreds. Now this is why I said I wouldn't use parchment paper on these because this is what it does even to fruit leather sheets. I don't know if you can see in the video. See how it's kind of bent up there? As it uh, dries, it, it pulls in the, the paper. This is not paper, it pulls in the mat. This is gonna be fine. Once I take these off, it's gonna release. But if you had parchment paper, this may stick like crazy because the parchment paper will have absorbed some of that moisture. Then we have the chopped. So let's get started with tzatziki. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and start putting these up in, um, in jars the way that you wanna store them so I can show you how to store. Uh, pardon the air conditioning noise going on in the background, but it's already 92, 92 degrees this morning in Texas. There's no way that I'm doing this without air conditioning. It would be a hot sweaty mess, but you may hear it in the background. All right, we're just gonna break these up like this. If you want the little tiny shard pieces. Now typically, this is what I would tell you to do. It's time to condition your jars. Especially if you're putting them back for storage. You're going to put your food in a jar that's just a little bit bigger than you need and shake it every day, once a day. Make sure it's all shaken up and you're going to make sure that it's actually dry. One, this equalizes moisture throughout the entire jar. You're checking for it sticking to the top, sticking in clumps, 
that if you just do a quick shake, it doesn't come up if and it comes apart. If it doesn't, and it takes a little bit of work, then it needs to go back into your dehydrator to dry some more. Do this for about five days for dry things like this, maybe seven for fruits, because you might need that extra time in tomatoes, okay? So at that point, store it. Label it and store it, because you might get this mixed up with zucchini. Not necessarily always a bad thing, but you wanna make sure that you know the difference between the two. Once you've done that, when you're ready, you can go ahead and vacuum seal. Just like this. This is not a necessary process, but it's helpful. The one thing that vacuum sealing can benefit, or like a lot, is if you are out of jars of the right size and you have a small amount of products, but you only have something larger to put it in, this can solve it so that you don't have all this extra air and moisture that can start making your dehydrated goods soft again. Put a ring on it, date it, label it, don't forget. Okay, but what we're going to do is make tzatziki. Now this was a lot of cucumbers that I did yesterday getting this ready. This is all that it created because remember I told you cucumbers are so much water that when you dehydrate it down, you're left with this. So this is a process that you can do all summer long to get it ready for storage for the year. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make a shelf-stable tzatziki mix so that you can mix with fresh yogurt or sour cream if you choose to use sour cream uh, anytime you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these cucumber bits that we just dried and we're making powder. If you have a lot to do with this once, you can probably use your larger blender, but we're using my uh, bullet blender today. Just pop this up. So we're gonna use this and here we go. Now you can make this as fine or as coarse as you want, especially if you're using this for things like tzatziki mix or the ranch dressing mix, which I'll put in the description box below. I've got recipes for both of those. I like to keep it a little on the coarse side because I like having that bit of texture in my tzatziki. Now, if you want something really quick and easy to elevate a store-bought condiment that you might have in your refrigerator, we happen to have some of this ranch dressing mix that came with a veggie plate that I had purchased on clearance, dried the vegetables, and then had this left over. It's been sitting in the refrigerator for a little while. We're gonna have it, I don't know, maybe with dinner. All right, we're gonna add a little extra dill because we wanna freshen it up some. It may be a little much. And I'm gonna take some of this cucumber we're gonna mix all this up. So see what you've got. And now what you have is an elevated cucumber dill ranch dressing mix. Great for dipping with anything that you'd like to dip. You'll wanna put this in the refrigerator for at least a few hours to allow those cucumbers in there to rehydrate and let all the flavors meld. Okay, so let's put together our mix. We're gonna go through these pretty quickly. Zuc I keep saying zucchini. We have our cucumber powder, dill, lemon powder, garlic, onion powder, salt, pepper. Now here's something optional. Uh, you may not like it, don't add it. But I've had this at a restaurant here in town and really liked it, so I add it to mine anyway. I add it to mine just for that extra little weird flavor in it. I really like it. Put in a little mint. It's not traditional, but I like it. Shake it up well. Not really mixed in well. And so you can see how much it makes. It makes about a half a cup. So if you wanted to make this in bulk, when you find the mixture of this that you like the most, you can always just serve this with a half a cup of mix to two cups to two and a half cups of yogurt, however you'd like it. Now, I have these set aside because what you can do is some of these really small pieces, they will rehydrate pretty well in your tzatziki, and you may like it to have more texture than what this is gonna offer you. This is gonna make it creamy. You can add a little of these and then just let it set for about two hours uh, before you serve it. That way it allows all the flavors to meld and these will rehydrate just fine. I'm gonna add just a small handful. 
a half a cup of our powder. Now to serve, when you're ready to serve, you can garnish it with a little, a little olive oil. However much you like. So doesn't this look great? It's really awesome stuff. Now, if you want to learn how to do tomatoes much the same way and create an awesome tomato spread for your sandwiches and burgers over the summer, watch this video right here. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.